Hello everybody. So I have another word from the Lord. And this one he gave to me um, July 15th, 2024 at 7.18 p.m. And this is what he said. Um, we're going to be reading from Isaiah 51 verse 1 is where we're starting. And it says, listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, who seek the Lord. Look to the rock. And then he said, the Lord. <laughs> from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug and then he said where you came from and he's saying from him like look to the rock that is him and where you came from which is him and then he said uh have me look up hewn and it means chop or cut and then it says something especially uh wood or coal with an axe pick or other tool but what he was saying to me was chop or cut like we are chopped and cut from god like we are in his image we are from him and then also make or shape something by cutting or chopping a material such as wood or stone because the lord is the rock right and so then uh cory means a place typically a large deep pit which from which stone or other materials are or have been extracted. So <laughs> this is good, you guys, because he's talking about the depths of him. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ooh, help me, Lord. Okay, so then two says, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave birth to you in pain. Who gave birth to you in pain just like and then he said to me just like this nation will give birth in pain through my tearing down pulling up destroying removing uprooting every faulty foundation in the earth to bring my new jerusalem my new people to bring in my glory and take back my throne here in the earth realm after uh, oh, the earth realm and they said Oh, her pain will be great, but my glory hereafter will be worth it. As a mother giving birth, and it pains her even up to her delivery date. And when pushing, warring her child into the earth, yet the moment she holds her child, the moment her child comes forth, the moment he or she enters the earth, it all becomes worth it as it will be as America and many other nations experience the new world I am I am creating and releasing. And then he took me to Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. And then he said, I am doing a new thing. They must let go of the old. So he's talking to people america the nations uh, the other nations he is saying i am doing a new thing they must let go of the old and then also the verse um verse 18 and 19 said do not call to mind the former th the former things or ponder and then he said i am giving birth to something new man will not be able to take credit for it this time and then he said the, and then the things of the past so i said do not call to mind the former thing or ponder the things of the past behold well behold i will and then he said i will in all caps do something new now it will spring forth and now it will spring forth is capital all capitals except it and they said will you not and then he said receive it to me he said receive it and then will you not be aware and then he said of what i am doing in the earth right now and then the scripture ends of it i will even make a roadway in the wilderness rivers in the desert and he said for my people the people will the people whom i form for myself will declare my praise 51 and 2 it says when he was but one i called him then i blessed him and multiplied him and then he had me underline i called him and circle call so he says i called him so nobody called you he called you okay and then he says i called him but he is talking 
about Abraham in the scripture. Then I blessed him and multiplied him. Indeed, the Lord will comfort Zion. And he said, his people. He will comfort, and he said, America again. And he said, this is not the first time America has been judged or warned, but this will be new to the people. A great awakening to the wicked. And this is all caps, starting great awakening to the wicked because i will not be mocked nor forgotten without cause for i am god the lord almighty and powerful there is none like me and there and he said t-h-e-i-r and t-h-e-r-e is none besides me i am alpha and omega and all the nations will see with their own eyes and feel in their own hearts yet many will still deny me my people will glory with me and praise me for my return on the throne in the earth realm and then three says he will comfort all her waste places and her uh, wilderness and then he said her alone time with him so he will comfort all her waste place and her wilderness so that means in her alone time with him then he says he will make like eden and her desert he said dryness like the garden of the lord joy and gladness will be found in her and he said again thanksgiving and sound of a melody he said to worship and praise me you will know me again like in heaven and then he said jeremiah 1 and 5 and that reads before i formed you in the womb i knew you and before you were born i consecrated you Whew, this is good stuff <laughs> this is good stuff it feels good to know like you were chosen way before so he's already planned out every detail of our lives right jeremiah 29 11 so it's like our future and everything is just it's, it's already made it's already laid out all we have to do is follow god's leading to get there and to know like he says <laughs> Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So before you were even in your mom's stomach, like he knew you. Oh, how precious we are that he knows us. And he says, and before you were born, he said, I consecrated you. Meaning I set you aside before your mama even gave birth. I have plans for you. You are special. <laughs> you guys, it brings so much joy to my heart. This is so beautiful. And four says, pay attention to me. And he said to me, and me alone. He said, oh, my people, and give ear to me, oh, my nation, for a law will go forth from me. And, and then a law in the government system, a decree. And then and he said, and I will set my justice for a light of the people. My righteousness is near. My salvation has gone forth. And then salvation, I wrote, he told me to write salvation equals deliverance for my people have gone forth the breaking through for my people has begun i am freeing the captives and then he took me to isaiah 61 2 to proclaim the favorable year of the lord and the day of vengeance of our god and then he said their god me says the lord to comfort all who mourn to grant those who mourn in zion giving them a garland a wreath of flowers and leaves worn on the head or hung as a decoration instead of ashes and he said shame and embarrassment dead things he said things satan been holding over your head and hearts bondage plus strongholds he said chains he said the oil of praise instead of mourning he says i want to set my people free he said, I want to set my people free, Haram. My heart bleeds for them. And then he had me look up and it says, wounded to feel pain or deep sympathy. So he feels great wound and he feels pain and deep sympathy for his children who are still in bondage and have strongholds or in chains. Then he says, the mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. That's what he wants to give you guys well those who are righteous because that's how it starts lord listen to me you who pursue righteousness so that's who this is for those are who he's talking to 
Um, and then he says, so they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Then they will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will rise up. They will raise up the former uh, devastations. And then it says, great, he said, great destructions and damage. So that's what devastation means, great destruction and damages. So they will raise up the former devastation and says and they will repair the ruin he says exposure destruction rebuild remember i told you that and he was talking to me because he gave me that i believe in 2023 in the beginning of the year um exposure he said exposure destruction and rebuilding is what's going to happen um and so then he said remember i told you told you that that is the order in which everything is set. First, people must see, then root up, then rebuild. He says, cities, the desolation of many generations. And then he took Isaiah 51 and 5. He says, and my arms will judge the people. The coastlands will wait for me. And for my arm, and for my arm, they will wait expectantly lift up your eyes to the sky then look to the earth beneath for the sky will vanish like smoke and the earth will wear out like a garment and its inhabitations will die in in like manner but my salvation will be forever and my righteousness only i am and that's what he said to me only i am alpha and omega beginning and the end i am forever and always and then he said will not wane and that means disappear or decrease and they said listen to me you who know my righteousness a people in whose heart is my law mm. make our hearts your law God. do not fear the reproach this is what god is saying so this is from the people he said so he said do not fear the reproach and it means to express disapproval or disappointment so do not fear it he says of men so do not fear disapproval or disappointment of men nor be dismayed feeling unhappy or disappointed sudden or complete loss of courage utter disheartment utter disheartment at their reviling and then it says criticize in an abusive or angrily insult manner so he's saying, do not fear it <laughs> and do not be discouraged when people sh express their disapprovals or disappointments. Don't feel unhappy about it or disappointed. Don't lose your courage and don't you like, just don't even fear it. Don't worry about it is what he's saying. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> Right, because as Christ followers, we know it comes with the territory, right? That comes with serving the true living God. That's why nobody else, for you know, um, Lord help me. That's why nobody else who follow other religions and other leaders or whatever you want to call them false. Okay, let's call them false gods, right? The Huda, the Huda, Hinduism, Buddha, all this other stuff universe like nobody will insult you for believing those things why because satan doesn't care as long as you're going the wrong way but go the right way everybody wants to pick up stones persecute you argue when you go for jesus why because he's the truth why else are these spirits in these people angry they should be like, oh that's a christian okay bye mind their own business but yet we're the most persecuted why because in the spiritual realm, there's a shaking and an awakening and an anger because these spirits hate the light and love darkness. And Jesus says he is the light. We are the light. God says we are the light. He is light. That's why some people can't stand to be around you. Because <laughs> you are exposing them just by being in the presence. And, you know, being in their presence by first being in the presence of God, you know. In, in his holiness okay so eight says for the moth will eat them like a garment and then he took me to joel 1 3 it says tell your children about it and let your children tell their children and their children the next generation what the 
Swarming locust has left. The swarming locust has eaten. And what the swarming locust has left. And what the creepy locust has eaten. And the creepy locust has left. The stripping locust has eaten and and has eaten and then he said in judgment of judah and that is in the amplified bible and then and the grub will eat them like wool will eat them like wool but my righteousness says the lord but my righteousness and this is the quality of being morally right or justifiable and then he said his love equals mercy his righteousness equals judgment his righteousness makes him a judge will be forever and my salvation to all generations meaning he'll continue to give mercy in your wrong decisions making for the bloodline through the generations and then he said number nine awake awake put on strength those who pursue righteousness this is to you awake awake put on strength O arm of the Lord, awake as in the day of old, the generation of long ago. Was it not you who cut Rahab in pieces? And then he says, Rahab is Egypt. That's what he was saying. So <laughs> he says, has it not, was it not you who cut Rahab in pieces? And then he says, Rahab is Egypt. And then have me look up Rahab, strong concordance, 7293, definition storm, a sea monster. Then it says noun, literally storm. And then it says arrogant, uh, one mystical sea monster, emblematic. Name of Egypt, emblematic. Uh, serving as a symbol who pierced the dragon okay I think okay who pierced the dragon was it not you who dried up the sea Exodus 13 21 it says then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord swept the sea back by a by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land so the waters were divided the dungeon of Israel went through the midst of the sea. No, no, the sun. The sons of Israel went through the midst of the sea on the dry land, and the waters were like a wall to them on their on their right hand and on their left. The waters of the deep of the great deep, who the depths of the sea a pathway for the redeemed to cross over so the ransom of the lord will return and come with joyful shouting to zion and everlasting joy will be on their heads they will obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and sign will flee away i even i am he who comforts you who are you that you are afraid of man who die and this is what god is saying to to people who are you that you are afraid of man who dies out and of the son of man who is like grass so he's saying who are you that you are afraid of man who dies and of the son of man who is like grass <laughs> that you have forgotten the lord he's saying you're afraid of mere man and forgotten and forgotten god like if god is on your side you have nothing to fear you should actually fear god not man you should you should fear god not man you should fear what happens if you don't obey because if you get out of his will because of fear if you get out of his will then you end up in the enemy's territory it's being in God's will that keeps you safe. But remember, if you watch my videos, there's a lot of teaching where sinning, disobeying God, rebellion, things of those nature, give Satan legal access in the spiritual realm. And you can watch my other videos for more in-depth things of that. But everything is spiritual because we have free will. So it's not like God, like you disobeyed me and he throws you there. It's just laws and orders that he has that we break by being disobedient that gives Satan access. So 
Anyway, 13, because this is great. And that you have forgotten the God, your maker. And then he said, in the face of man. And he says, who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth that you fear continually all day long because of the, the fury of the oppressor of the oppressor as he makes ready to destroy but where is the fear fury oppressor the exile will soon be set free and will not die in the dungeon and then he said dungeon have me look it up a strong underground prison cell especially in a castle then he said satan's kingdom then it said that's what he said now the scripture says nor will his bread be lacking and then he said you will be filled up with his word deliverance is the children's bread matthew 15 24 jesus said i was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of israel and then he said god is delivering his people in this hour your deliverance is for is for keeps your deliverance is for keeps and then he said you are my people and then he says rouse yourself rouse yourself arise O jerusalem you who have drunken from the lord's hand the cup of his anger of reeling you have drained to the dregs there is none to guide her among all the sons she has bore nor is there one to take her by the hand among all the sons she has near she has reared these two things have befallen you who will mourn for you the devastation and destruction famine and sword how shall i comfort you your sons have fainted they lie helpless at the heed of every street like an antelope in a net full of the wrath of the lord the rebuke of your god Therefore, please hear this, you afflicted who are drunk, but not with wine. Thus said the Lord, the Lord, even your God, who contends for his people. Behold, I have taken out of your hand the cup of real, is that reeling? Or that is reeling. My anger, you will never drink it again. I will put it into the hand of your tormentors who have said to you, lie down that we make your back like the ground and like the street for those who walk over it and then the lord said this is after and then he said to me this is after the famine plague the sword after the after the famine the plague and the sword hit and god delivers his people after judgment amen you guys i definitely butchered some things i ain't even gonna lie but I hope you get it. <laughs> really, he's just saying, and he's speaking of the great victory that is to come for those who pursue righteousness. So after we go through a whole drought with no food, after, you know, the plague with all the disease and the pestilence, after the sword, so people dying, you know? And so after all of this, because there are words I've given before this, so everything is leading up to this video today so if you miss some things and you want to know what's going on and you missed a lot i have a playlist that is called the beginning of judgment and they're all in order so you will be right on track all the way from like 2022 into today which is august 13 2024 and so therefore god is saying once all of this happens his people his remnant is the remnant right his people all who come to him all who have repented and turned from their wicked way so no you cannot apologize and go back to the world and think you're safe no you have to maintain your relationship with god you have to continue to choose him over and over and over again you must set yourself aside you must unplug from the world and plug into God you must separate lukewarm is still on the devil's side I've said that in plenty of videos it's either Satan or it's God like there's no in between and not choosing is still Satan because to choose God you have to grow and you have to change right because what we've talked about and I 
I probably even said this in like my first video ever, but like when you fall in love with somebody and they're the right person, them loving you changes you. It makes you want to be a better person. It makes you want to quit doing things because you're in love, especially and only if you love the right way. And so when you give your life to God and God is showing himself to you and you're getting to know him, you fall more and more in love. And then it's Holy Spirit. You give up, you surrender. You're like, God, I just want you like do the work in me, change me like Holy Spirit, have your way. And the Holy Spirit changes you through surrendering because the flesh in another video I've talked about, your flesh equals Satan and your spirit is God, right? And you can read about that in Galatians and Colossians. Paul talks about it and breaks it down. And so the thing is, when you choose God, you are surrendering, you are giving up, you're no longer wrestling with him or fighting with him or trying to convince him or beg him nor manipulate him. You are really like, God, all I want is you. So do what you must do. You give up, you know, you submit. Like, you know, like when you're married, like the female submits to her husband, right? Submits under him. It's all about submitting, but it's in order. Like husband submit to God, then wife submits to husband. Once husband submitted to God, and when she's submitting to her husband who submitted to God, she's really submitted to God because her husband submitted to God, which means everything in his leading in the way he moves is the way of God. And so we, as his bride, must submit to our husband. And this is men or women, bride of Christ, must submit to our husband, God, you know? submit to him and allow him to have his way rebrand us renew us transform our mind you know not fight him but agree with him open your heart to him open your mind be willing to hear what it is he has to say this is why we do not lean on our own understanding <laughs> but anyways and so yeah so that's really just what this word is about like just give like once you pass through the test once you fully submit it once judgment comes because this is the year of the vengeance and the year of the favor of the lord those on god's side chose him allow him to clean them up is committed and submitted to him is in this for the long haul ain't going back to Egypt, not mingling with the devil, like completely cut it off, has a repentant heart, a remorseful heart, and really changes by just giving up and letting God have his way, you know? Then this is the favorable year for you. The year of the vengeance is for the disobedient, the sons of <laughs> Israel that just won't return, and the sons of Satan who just want no parts, never did, never cared. Know what I'm saying? And so just the one, the disobedient, the rebellions, the one who don't want God. And this is the year of vengeance for them. And so God is just putting hope in the hearts of his children for those who are pursuing righteousness. He's letting you know he has a plan for you. He's letting you know Jeremiah 29, 11 is for you. He's letting you know you are not forgotten. He's letting you know way of escape for you. He's letting you know you are not forgotten and that he has everything planned for you and an appointed time for you to be delivered from the enemy's hands and from your oppressors. All right, you guys, we give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise because what a good, good, good father he is that he continues to think about us, continues to show us mercy, and that his word is true, that he is forever loving and kind and his mercy endures forever. So <laughs> glory be to God, praises be to our father in heaven. We love, love, love you, God. I love you and thank you for this beautiful and blessed word in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Peace.